art is the progression, Mm. you know? Um, And you should be looking back on your previous work and cringing. Like that is part of being an artist. Hey everyone, I'm Halise, a digital storyteller and video producer. And I'm caffeinated. (laughs) And I'm Mr. Halise. And I'll probably be editing this episode. Yeah. And this is a Stumblewell podcast. A couple that you know talking about our relationships, marriage, and other things like that. So, yeah. Roll the intro. So, it's been a while. It's been a while. Uh, since we did a podcast episode and I think we went through some pod fade. I'm not going to lie. I think we actually went through pod fade. That's a term I learned apparently that Mm. podcasters have where they get really tired of doing the podcast and they fade into the oblivion. I'm staring off into the distance because I feel like, I feel like that afflicts everybody. Just fade. Right. I mean, it basically sounds like burnout in so few words. Work fatigue. Yeah. Job fatigue. Sure. Cooking fatigue. Laundry fatigue. Yeah. So anyway, point of the story, we're trying to get back into it. We're trying to do them relatively consistently now. Just get back into it. I think we kind of also took a break because, which leads to the topic of today's episode. What? You started writing more. Oh, yeah. And... I think we were still just figuring out learning like what the new balance of your day looks like as well. And I wanted to give you the space to kind of figure that out for yourself. Oh, I appreciate it. As well. So it was just like not super in a rush to make more episodes. But folks really missed them. So we're back. We're listening. She's listening. I Yeah. And I'm here too. (laughs) (laughs) So in today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit Mr. Hollis, I want to talk to you a little bit about... Wait, you're Chris. You're Chris here, right? I go by any number of names. Love, I'm going to talk to you today about... <laughs> Chris, the <laughs> the great stain on the kitchen? <laughs> I'm going to talk... Destroyer to of kitchens? <laughs> I wanted to talk to you about... It's been... How long has it been since you quit your nursing job and started writing full-time for yourself? The first time? Question mark? Oh, do they even know that? That you went back for a hot second? I don't know... If it's widely known. I don't think it is. See, I don't learn lessons th- quickly. Yeah, we got stuff to talk about. See, look. I don't learn lessons all that well. Quit in April of 2021. Yeah. Thanks to you. Um, felt something, I don't know, something akin to like a grain of sand in an oyster. You're like, it's kind of bothering me that I'm not working. Do I have worth? Am I worthy of anything in the relationship anymore? What do I bring to the table? Aside from dinner most <laughs> nights. Um, and that led me to think about student loans. They're everywhere. Ah. Sure. And then I went back to work February 2022. Stuck it out for a little bit. Wasn't a huge fan. And then quit in April of 2022 again. Yeah. You technically haven't been officially unemployed. He keeps messing up my tax return situations by going and getting a job and then quitting. <laughs> I didn't earn that much this time, though. All right. We'll see how it goes. I was very upset. <laughs> I didn't even earn that much the last time. It's still like messed up the taxes. <laughs> anyway. It's because you make too much money. <laughs> no, I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> How do you feel about your wife making too much money? I love it. <laughs> we, eat, we eat all the time. I get to enjoy wine every so often. Oh, my goodness. Point of the story being, you haven't officially had one year of writing consecutively because you keep going back to nursing positions to only to realize that nursing isn't for you long term. It is a short term solution for you. And it's like a very obviously marketable skill set to have. Right. It's very tempting to go back. Yes. Easily tempting. But then you inevitably go back and you're like, oh, yeah. Hmm. Ah. That thing. Yeah. There's poop everywhere. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, originally I was going to name this video, or originally this podcast episode was going to be one year of writing, but you technically (laughs) haven't hit a year yet. Uh, Four months of writing. Yeah. It's interrupted. It's like a year interrupted. 
Okay. Ooh, that's a good title. A Year Interrupted year of interrupted. Writing. The Chris Not My Story. <laughs> yeah. How are you feeling? How are you feeling a year in, interrupted, but a year in to writing? I still don't know what my worth is. Cool. Well, Emotionally, that's, financially. That's interesting. Yeah. I, we can break that down, I Ooh, think. Relationship-wise? I mean, I, I do. It's just, it's easy for it to get muddled. Ah, why? As a allo cis male, okay, yeah. um, your worth is traditionally determined by how much you bring home. Hmm. I mean, that's most people, but I feel like yeah, as a man, I, yeah, I think in, I think we can go ahead and say that for men, it's uh, it's it's more so the, that than women. The phallus measuring competition in, in the most heterosexual circles sense anyway is you don't whip out you know you don't whip it out anymore you whip out your paycheck what's your budget yeah what are you driving what do you do from nine to five every day yeah, yeah. Oh, i write oh like in a diary like a psychologist no fiction mm. <laughs> and then they immediately tune out See, I feel like you think people tune out. I don't I do. see that. When you tell other people when we're out in the world and you tell people about the fact that you're writing, and I feel like most people you have told this to so far, and I don't know if it's just because maybe the reason why this is is because most of the people that you have had conversations with about your writing are also in creative spaces, so they're very willing to hear about that. Mm. Like it's not weird for them to meet a writer you know whereas I think I feel like when you think about how people see what you do you're coming at it very much from like I don't know um no yeah th th these are traditional w2 yeah. folks whose parents were w2 folks and yeah. so they don't really know anybody who's in that sphere but even when we talk to those people they'll be like how interesting how's that going and it's not I mean I think Maybe this is just my, I don't want to say naivete, but maybe this is me just being more like, this is my truth, so it doesn't matter to me if you're subconsciously judging me in some way around it, you know? Because it's like, your opinion of me is not my business, but you're asking me how I'm doing, so I'm going to answer right. the question. So yeah, I'm creating art, I'm doing this. And then inevitably, people tend to find it interesting. So. I mean, I'll give you that, but... Along those lines, someone's asking, oh, okay, so you're a writer. How is that going? Yeah. I don't know how to answer that. It's like subjectively to me, well, I haven't, I haven't published anything yet. You haven't published anything, but how many short stories have you written? You're halfway through your first novel. Like, you're writing, you know? I mean, I guess I understand what you're saying because... I remember when I started kind of telling people like, oh, I'm a video producer, but I also do right. YouTube and stuff like that. Yeah, people would kind of like ask those questions around sort of like traditional YouTube questions. They're like, oh, how many subscribers do you have? And you know, and it's just like, I mean, I have an amount of people. I don't know. Let me go look and tell you, you know. And everyone kind of hangs on to that metric um, because as people who aren't on YouTube, that's kind of the only metric they go. So it's like, right. I don't really blame people for that. You know what I mean? But that's just par for the course, you know? Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for listening slash watching this episode of the Stumblewell podcast. Quick announcements. If you're new here, hi. Thanks for stopping by. Wow. Um, but go ahead and like this video and or rate us wherever you're listening to us. Five stars is preferred, but we love constructive criticism Nevertheless, so, you know, give us what give us what you feel we deserve, but we like five stars. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and you're watching us on YouTube. Subscribe to this here YouTube channel that helps us out algorithmically and whatnot. And then finally, if you want to take it a step further, consider joining the Patreon, patreon.com slash Halise. There you get early access to these episodes as well as private vlogs from me background stuff bts it's it's fun we actually have a couple of new members that i wanted to shout out because thank y'all for joining the patreon i really appreciate it stephanie kelly who's actually a co-producer of the show 
Oh, okay. Yeah, Stephanie Kelly is one and the same. She co-produced episodes two and three via the Indiegogo of the show. Oh, okay. Yeah, so she's cool. Hey, Stephanie. Thank you. Um, Jack Siverand the second. That's a name. Jack, hi. Welcome. So good they did it twice. It's a strong name. Jack Siverand the second. Welcome to the Patreon. Thank you so much for joining us. And Uchenna Bass, thank you so much. I am delighted to have you in the community. Thank you for being there. Patreon.com slash Halise if you are interested. And yeah, with that, back to the podcast episode. Bye. Bye. I usually just tell people more when they do kind of come in at it with like YouTube stuff. Uh, I tell people more like, oh, well, I just tell people more about what YouTube has enabled me to do rather than like, here's what the subscriber count is and here's what this is. And, you know, I steer the conversation where I want it to go. I feel like that's mostly where this conversation is, is coming from because I, I feel comfortable with where I am in the writing process. Like I know that this is a five to 10 year thing, five to 10 year commitment in time and energy and as much work as I can put out there to make myself into the writer that I can become mm. or think I can become, hope to become. Yes, I could have come out the gate, you know, just pitching amazing stuff and that that wasn't the case. And it's like, okay, that's fine. Just work on it. Everybody else works on it. That's how everybody else's course goes. But I feel like when people ask, oh, well, how is it going? Or I, I don't want to say like, oh, you know, I've, I've written, you know, like 35, I've written 35 stories and I have a podcast and, and yeah, I'm good. Like, I don't, I don't want it to sound too much because I don't want to feel like, hmm. I don't want it to sound like I'm absorbed in that it's like oh yeah you know I've, I've already done this and that and it's like that's not an accomplishment like you've you've done the things but i'm at the point where i just kind of have to eat crow or i just have to it's like yeah i'm i'm struggling to get published i'm putting out work i'm everything that i can't get published just goes onto the podcast and i mean that's that's my process right now i don't really feel like I need to hold people's attention or win them over with, you know, like where I am. Cause it's not like, I, I don't really have anything to hold their attention. I don't feel like I need to justify myself to passing people unless it's an editor or a publisher. Then it's like, yeah, you know, then I'll talk it up. And even then I don't feel like my story, I feel like my stories are good. I like where they are, but they're not quite where I want them to be. It's like, Oh, there's all this. And there's all this self doubt with so many writers that I, Sorry, I make it sound like there's more than three or four. But every writer that I've spoken with, at least in fiction, has that same issue where they're like, yeah, it's, I don't know if my stuff is good. And so just talking with other people, and, and, and that's been a slow process too. Um, but other writers, I immediately turn on, perk up, because I want to hear what they have to say. And, and it's rejuvenating. It's, it's enlightening to hear that my struggle is everyone else's struggle. Mm -hmm. Not that I want everybody else to struggle, right? but that we're all going through the same metamorphosis. Yeah, you're not like in a space that is unfamiliar right. to the overall process. All right. I feel good about it. It's I would prefer to have a little bit more external validation, but I feel like once my work gets to a point where it is, and this may not be right, but where it's worthy of external validation, then it'll get it. But with you, you're actually... Like you actually have a good and interesting career because you bounce back and forth in the same way that I did in nursing. And, you know, like it's 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 interesting. And then you're producing your own show. So, I mean, you have a lot of things that catch people's attention when you talk to them. But you're you're in a mindset where you're like, yeah, I mean, actually, this, this is the perfect uh, approximation in the mm. same way that you talk to you about your own career. Yeah. And I'm the one more often than not that's like, you're a hype man. Yeah. It's like, no, I mean, she's... She's worked for blah and blah and blah, and she's produced videos for blah, blah, blah. And she's, you know, interviewed CEOs and she works with this organization locally. And because to you, your ultimate goal has just not been accomplished yet, which is either producing the show or I, I don't know at, at this point in time. I don't know either. Well, and for me, it's like, oh, OK, for me, it's all rounded out as well. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, I put out a podcast. I've written these stories, but I still haven't gotten that external validation. So I don't feel like I've hit that next plateau yet. Hmm. Okay. I guess that helps me understand it a little bit more. 
I guess like, so for me, the reason why I kind of not necessarily gloss over things, I just don't feel like explaining it. (laughs) So like we're doing the same thing, but for different reasons. For the longest time, for most of my professional career, especially right out of college and everything I've done since then, I just say video producer and leave it at that because it's like, yeah, I made videos for big firms, but it was nothing that anyone saw if you did not work at that big firm or was like trying to be poached by that big firm. It was all business to business stuff. And it's like all like you needed to have an unofficial engineering degree to understand what was happening. Right. So this is like I can't really tell people about that because it's to your point, it genuinely is boring, you know, like genuinely not not even boring it's just not going to catch their attention sure it's not going to catch their attention or whatever the thing is right um and it's like but even doing that is like trying to catch a house fly with your hands right or it's i mean like unless you have a more captive or friendly audience it's going to be difficult yeah or so with like all that kind of stuff and so i feel like I didn't finally, because people would ask inevitably, actually, it's similar to your point. I'm understanding now, okay. But, like, people would ask inevitably, like... It took us 40 minutes. But yeah. <laughs> people would ask, and I would be like, oh, have you seen, have you done anything that I've seen or could see? And it'd be like, nah. <laughs> I haven't, you know, like... No, it's, it's, it's in a tech, a tech conference, if you were yeah, part of you, that massive tech conference. Yeah, sure. Like, if you, are you but in no. IT, you know, uh, then sure. Are you sure. a surgeon? Are you a brain? Or right, a yeah. Spine or you a spine surgeon? Then yes, um, I might be why you bought the thing, you know. <laughs> but yeah, for the longest time, is that the, the first time I actually finally got to like someone asked me, "Have you done anything I've seen?" That wasn't the YouTube channel, which obviously it's great, but like again, I think there is a certain stigma with YouTubers. It's going away officially, but like for the longest time, it was. It was the show. It was the PBS show. That was the first time, and that was. 2019 that wasn't that long ago (laughs) that I could finally say yes I've produced a show (laughs) that's on PB you know and like you can see that and And it's got the and it's got the company logo and it's got all the things and people are like oh my gosh she does a thing you know like my grandparents I think are still like she does stuff with PBS like they don't I think that was probably even the first thing that my parents could really like truly understand agreed yeah of what I did you know um, and so, yeah, for me, it wasn't ever actually that I didn't mind talking about what I did. It was that when I had done it in the past, people would be like, I genuinely don't understand what you do. And I was like, ah, well, so I make videos. <laughs> not that it's not worthy of attention or it's not worthy of praise, Yeah. but that it's not going to peak up people's interests. Not even that it's not going to peak up. People just genuinely didn't understand. So. I work with cameras. I, I work with cameras. It, I make a living from it, so it's going well. <laughs> I feel like people that use very general descriptions like that of what they do mm-hmm. actually do very, and they've they've had to a- answer that so many times. And they're like, oh, oh, so what? Like, what type of cameras? Oh, you know, the really big uh, cinema line cameras. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah you, the the you know the red cameras. Yeah, it's actually like you're actually bringing up a good point. It is kind of like a, a link tree of like uh, do the past phase one. Oh, they actually understand that phase. Okay, phase two. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. I can actually truly explain. This is delightful. What a what a delight. Yeah, because you you can't say that you're a light engineer for cinema line cameras. Yeah. You could say that to me. I'd be like, "What? That's crazy," you know. But what? 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 It? What? And it's that's ex- the exact reaction. Yeah. Like, what? What? And it's like, God, <laughs> this is gonna. This is a two-hour flight, and it's gonna be all two hours. Yeah. Explaining to you, or you're gonna like just tune out and start eating your snack. Yeah, yeah. I pray that it's the latter. <laughs> uh, it's. I do find it interesting though that you um, you re- you're seeking the external validation right now. I mean, I guess that it makes sense to want that, obviously. At some point, I'd said, I don't even need my stuff to be read. I, or do, I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. I just want to put it out there because I feel like it's worthy of being out there. And it's like, that's a very privileged way of looking at it. I, I don't think it's wrong, but hmm. un, like a writer, screenwriter, movie producer, what have you. Uh-huh. If you produce something and it doesn't reach its intended audience, then I don't 
think it's been successful. Like I write short stories and unless they're read or heard, then I'm just screaming into the void. And I was talking to that other guy that I was, um, I, I had met for drinks. Oh yeah. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago I was telling him about, yeah. So I think my, my greatest fear at this point in time is screaming into the empty void or realizing in 10 years time that I've just been doing that. Like I've just been writing stuff and it's just been going straight into the incinerator because there are people on Twitch that, I mean, they, they have a stream, right? They're live streaming for hours at a time Yeah. and they're talking to the camera like they're, like, like they're talking to an audience, mm-hmm. engaging with people. Yeah. And it's an audience of zero. Yeah. And and it's what what they're doing is, is what they want to do because they wouldn't be doing it otherwise ish. Sure. But I my stuff needs ears. It needs an audience. If if fiction is written and not, and not digested. Read. Yeah, not read. And not not taken in by an audience, then it might as well have just not been not been read. Hmm. I don't want to be similar to you. I don't want to have notoriety posthumously. I would rather my stuff be enjoyed now. Not so I can enjoy the windfall of it. So I can, you know, have fame or, or, or fortune or anything like that. I just, I want my stuff to be enjoyed. I would love to be approached by somebody and they're like, that character shouldn't have died. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, that's three series ago. Yeah. I'm yeah. on series, I don't know what now. I, I that the character in book three just shouldn't have died. Like okay. the, the, it just wasn't believable. And it's like, I've already created this like schematic of this character in this world right. that you got lost in, except for this one little pebble that you tripped up on Yeah, and you're still upset about it. And it's like, I impacted your life. <laughs> yeah. And I, and that, that is a win. It's like, I'm very sorry. How would you feel like, and I would like love to get like, how would you feel like that character would have, would have reacted. Yeah, that's a that's a better way to have gone it, but or to have done it, but I, that's that's the way it was written, that's the way it was published. Sorry. Yeah. But thank you very much for reading. Can I do anything for you? <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about one of the other books that you enjoy and not hate? Yeah. I was more fascinated that you decided to take on writing a novel. So to me it feels early, but what do I know? I don't because to me, the only, like the only thing I can equate writing a novel to is, f- like in my line of work, would be making a feature film, and the to me the thought of making a feature film right now where I'm at in my career is like, first of all, having to be on set for two weeks, hell no, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like mentally I don't feel like I can do that, let alone direct a feature or like produce a feature, you know what I mean? See, but you can. I mean, I can, but yeah. like. I feel like that's such a huge step up from what I'm currently doing or like I'm capable of doing. Um, I guess unless you break it up like the show, because basically the show is like an hour. All five episodes would be an hour of content. Anyway. I mean, a lot of people say that where it's like, well, I mean. Just break it up. A feature is just a br- like a not, an uninterrupted or non-broken up. Yeah, show. Short or show or whatever. And yeah. it's the same thing with a novel. It's like, yeah, you know, it's just each chapter is its own story. And that's a great way to think about it. But in reality, it's not because each chapter has to interconnect and then there need to be callbacks to make it interesting. And the, the characters have to be, you know, fleshed out. It can't just be this character shows up in this one chapter and they're an amazing character mm. and then you never see them again. No, that character needs to continue. Or maybe the character does die off, but like it needs to be meaningful. And that character needs to be meaningful to the reader to even have bothered showing up. Otherwise, why do it? Yeah. Um, and to me, yeah, I just wanted to start writing a book because there's so many people that write and then they're, they're face the same fears that I have and they, they refuse to put their work out because they're afraid of rejection or they don't think that they can get their foot in the door. And many of those fears may be spot on, Yeah, unfortunately. Sure. Same thing for me. That's not to say that I'm going to break through either, but I'm, I'm still going to write and at some point, you're going to read what you're writing and you're going to say that story isn't how the story needs to be told. And then you're going to start rewriting it. And so why would I wait until I'm a good enough writer to know that I'm going to do that when I could just start and rewrite the work as I'm going, you know what I mean? So it's like, I'm not, I'm not afraid to go back and fail 
mm-hmm. at least initially when I'm re- reading it, where it's like, mm, this isn't quite, this is too broken up, it's too choppy, it doesn't make sense, it's not an actual story. True. That's fine. Do you still want to tell the story? Yes. So how do you fix it? And then you go back and you fix it. So I'm 35,000-ish words in. Yeah, y'all, he's like almost halfway done. That's like more or less, more or less halfway done with the novel. That's almost a third at this point, I think, for where it needs to be, but it could be half. Um, but yeah, I mean, so I'm 35,000 words in. There's at least 1,500 that are going to be completely erased. And that's not to say that I can find a home for all these other chapters, but I'm hoping to still integrate them. Yeah. And if not, then you just end up writing more words. But it's the whole process of writing. You write and then you rewrite. And a lot of the gems that you thought were great, it's like, I mean, they were, but they don't let the story flow. Or they were great when you, like, because in the process of writing this novel, you've already gotten a lot, I feel a lot better in your writing. Like, every time we have a podcast episode where we talk about your progression as a writer in this time frame, in this (laughs) interrupted time frame, you get better and better. Like, I've been... um, listening to the last few episodes of the n- this season season three of how does this end mm-hmm. and it's like dang like these are some good like ev- every story is like a banger you know what i'm saying like they're consistently coming out whereas i feel like with previous seasons you had your strong you had like one or two what i felt were strong stories and for me it was more strong in that i define a strong story that you write as something where it's like I'm reading it and visually I can see it playing out. No, like I see the movie, right. you know? And they were sandwiched. Yeah, the you were. The bad ones were sandwiched. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the ones that were not as strong yeah. were sandwiched between the strong ones. Yeah, yeah. And so, but uh, it's been interesting because this season of the podcast, like you didn't do the sound design and sound effects stuff just because, yeah, you're, you're focusing on the novel and whatnot and trying to balance the two now. Right. But like the stories haven't suffered. So that's also like another interesting metric that at least I, on the outside I'm noticing, like kind of with running, you know, how we're both training to run. Anyway, point of story with running, like, you know, you run so far, you run like nine miles, do a nine mile run. And you remember how like six months ago doing a nine mile run, the rest of the week you're fucked, you know, <laughs> like your legs are just like all jello, like lactic acid, all this stuff, right? But now it's like you run nine miles and it's just the rest of the day you're messed up. And then the next day you do a recovery run for another 30, 45 minutes and you run a little slower because, yeah, you ran nine miles the day before. But it's like you're recovering faster. And so for me, it's been interesting to see like equating that to your writing where it's like, oh, you're currently writing a novel and you're in the process of like rewriting it basically while you're actively writing it. And you're putting out this podcast and like the stories are still the stories are still improving in spite you actually splitting your time more, which is interesting. I'm it's not self deprecation. Even when the stories are not some, even with the season, I feel like there's still some that aren't up to my, my own internal like benchmark Mm. of quality, but at, at bare minimum, maybe it's not a whole story. At least it's interesting. Yeah, and, I think, I, and I try to make them shorter. Yeah, I mean, I think the, some of them are very much like a slice of life or they're giving like French New Wave or you're just kind of like in a moment in time yeah. kind of thing. But the writing is still strong. It's still there. It, or I guess it's getting stronger. I know you don't like, I know you don't like uh, hearing feedback that's very like overtly positive or there's no room for like more growth beyond the comment. So I can see that your writing is getting stronger. See, and I think that's cool. I mean, and, and I appreciate that. I, I appreciate people when they listen to it, any of the stories or podcast episodes or whatever. Um, and then hearing people say, oh, well, the stories are getting better or stronger. Or, and it's like, okay, at the beginning, so we, we both know that the stories weren't, weren't as strong, but no one could quite tell me like why. Yeah. And now you can just recognize that, oh, this is a better story. And it's like, yeah, I know, but... <laughs> I had to discover it myself as opposed to, and again, that's the internal validation as opposed to the external. It's like if someone else had told me that it wasn't as strong for these reasons, then I'd be that much better, that much sooner. But that's that's not necessarily true. And Yeah, I was going to say, like, everyone needs a baseline to know where to come at you from. Like, I don't think it's fair 
to come up to someone who's a new writer and be expecting Stephen King. Like, that's not fair, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Depends on which Stephen King book. <laughs> well, but you get what I'm saying, right? I don't think it's fair to, do, to like, uh, come up a writer who's in year one and be like, I'm expecting year 30. And it's like, that's just mean. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, oh, have you been, like, oh, you're a painter now. And you see a painting, it's like, oh, okay. You've been doing this for a year. That, I mean, I know what that is. Like, that's that's progress that's cool and then yeah a year later of interrupted work and you're like oh shit your shading's getting like amazing i'm seeing the graphite so you're playing around with textures now you know like art is the progression Mm. you know um and you should be looking back on your previous work and cringing like that is part of being an artist i mean i go back and watch some of my videos and i'm just like (laughs) Crash, you know, but people are praising it in the comments because of where I was at that time. It was pretty good. Now it's trash. It's terrible. There's maybe I can count on one hand the number of videos I can go back and watch in the lifetime of my channel and be like, that's still a good video to me. Now, even with everything I know now, like I hit it. But I want to say there's over 300 videos on my channel. And I can count on one hand how many of them that I feel can like last the test of time. Yeah, but as you and I both know, sometimes something just needs to come out. No, that's but that's the point I'm making no, yeah, is yeah. that you're you're in it, you're doing it, like you're consistently working at it and putting things out. I, that was a tangential. And the banger's comment. gonna the banger's gonna hit eventually because it's like you're hedging, like you're stacking your bets to succeed. Like that's. I feel like that's like the bulk of what being an artist is, is you have to stack your bets, like just keep pushing stuff out. Yeah, I I do appreciate that attribute that a lot of people have, a lot of artists have, which is the self-evaluation and then the growth. Mm. Because if if there's no growth afterwards, then you're just kind of, it's like, oh yeah, you know, I'm just pushing out the same, the same thing over and over and over again. It's like, I mean, this is like goosebumps level stuff, which is not bad. They're stories. Yeah. But sometimes people want to read something more than, than just goosebumps. They actually want to be afraid of like this six eyed thing with teeth for ears or something. I don't know. Yeah, sure, sure. I just yeah. I appreciate that you do have a critical eye in general like in most things. I think you have a pretty critical eye. I complain a lot. <laughs> but I I mean I appreciate that you have that about your own work. I also feel like it's my job as the person who's been in artistry, like as a money making venture, I guess, for a while to kind of be the person that's like, who has enough like um, outside view of what you're going through to be like, there you go, that's the word, um, to just be like, you're doing it. So, you know, you're doing it. Yeah, it's, I, I shouldn't look to my partner, who is also my producer. <laughs> who's also like my co and or assistant editor to be the end all be all for my professional career or for my writing career. I just do quality check on the podcast. That's it. Okay. But, but still like I'm, I'm not, ex- I'm not expecting it of you. I'm just saying that like when I hear that feedback, that's the internal voice in my head that I just need to like push aside mm. because the fact is that they're listening and the fact is that they can, they can tell the same things that you can tell which is that the storytelling is getting better. Yeah. I'm excited to see if there's ever a point with your podcast um, where, yeah, where you hit, get people that are like, man, but this isn't season two. You know what I mean? Or this is no season 10 or just whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like kind of like with Bob's Burgers. Bob's Burgers is on like what, season 12 now? Yeah, 13. 13, wow. It's 13 seasons of this cartoon. And I still feel like it's heyday with seasons one through four, just saying, you know, <laughs> it's getting back into it. Seasons like right. 12. I don't know if they switch writers or what, but it's like, ooh, we're getting back into what it was before. But it's also like you can only do so much with these kids, you know, before, somebody's got to graduate. Yeah, these or ageless kids. Yeah, we're, we're Simpsoning it again, you know, um, but all that to say, I think you're doing it. I don't know what the takeaway of this podcast should be. I think at some point. I, I hope it does. I hope at some point they're like, wow, this is the best podcast or the best season yet. The stories are really good. 
so on and so forth. I can't wait for the next season, and then the next season doesn't drop. Because once that hits, once I've hit that level yeah. of writing, then I'm getting paid for my short stories. Then I'm getting paid for... Oh, because the next season doesn't come because now you're actually selling everything right. you write. Oh. And you're like, oh, well, you know, season two isn't season six. And it's like, yeah, season six, I was a better writer. And then that's why there's no season seven because... I, I was finally able to sell my stuff. I was going to think of it the other way around where it was like, oh, people are waiting for the next season to drop or like season seven or whatever to drop. And it does. And they're like, stories are just okay. And you're like, yeah, because all the good ones I sold. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> like I was going to think of the other way around. <laughs> and so, yeah, you know, the podcast got these stories. <laughs> and it just depends. Like the, the, the good, team. The good stories could still come out. <laughs> Uh, just depends on the terms of the contract. Sure, sure. I'm just saying that'd also be fascinating. That's better because then I'm not abandoning the people that, yeah. <laughs> that see value in me. Yeah. Point of the story. It's been an a interrupted year of you writing. It's actually been two. Two Remember interrupted years. I started years. December 2021. 2021? 2020. I quit December 2020. Wow. Yeah, so it's almost been two years. What is time? That's crazy. Well, I'm 35. I got to figure out the storytelling stuff <laughs> quick. I mean, yeah, sure. We're already, what, two years in? Interrupted, but two years in. That means if we're really, like, thinking logically, and if you keep going at the rate you're going, you've you're, only you're got, five. yeah, you're you've only got, like, another three years. That's not that long, God willing. So, I'm just saying. Um... Thank you. <laughs> In the comments below, let us know about your artistic endeavors. And or if you have any questions for Mr. Holly slash Chris about his writing career, check out the How Does This End podcast. It's an original storytelling podcast. It is available across most platforms. You can get your podcast for sure. Spotify, iTunes. Apple. Oh, that's iTunes. iTunes. Google. Stitcher. Stitcher. Is Anchor. It on Stitcher? Yeah, it's, it's on okay. I put it on Stitcher. It's on most of them. It's good, though. Season three is currently happening. It's actually probably wrapped up by the time this episode comes out. But season three, six episodes. Stumble well. Stumble, stumble on. on. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.